Hi, my name is Alan. This is a summit that has a lot to talk about, so I'm going to just trying to show you how useful Git can be for you. So how many of you know what Git is? What? One, one person, maybe two. <laughs> okay. Git is an SCM program with the purpose of uh, managing a set of files as they change over time. This means version control. So SCM stands for the source code management. And you, it's a natural program you use to store all your code. And you can see every change that you've ever done. There's also called the ECS or a version control system. And the reason I chose SCM is because this presentation is more focused on software development. But uh, you can do this with nearly any file, type of file on your computer. So let's go through a regular work cycle. First you do some work, then you try it, and if it's good, then you keep working. But if it's bad, well, first you get angry, right? But then you need to retrace your steps. But how do we retrace? Well, maybe you keep copies of folders like V1, V2, uh, or you, if you're smart, you use timestamp like October 2010. Logo World I've used this quite a lot in the past. And this is also uh, the case if you're trying to experiment a new feature. You feature usually you do that. You copy from your folder, try it out, and you understand that new folder. But if you have a blog, you also comment out uh, large code chunks, or maybe you put lots of debug print statements to try to find out where the blog is. But the problem with this is to, because later you need to go back and remove it because you don't want that to leak into the production version. That actually happened to me quite <laughs> a lot in the past. And um, so SEM makes it easier. SEM is a way to, um, uh, you can, it keeps track of your changes, you can view the history of a file, you can even, even see who changed what according to each line of code in your, in your file. I'm saying code, you can uh, write, uh, write any text to any file that has content in it, you can see who changed what. Uh, and you can also go back to any earlier version. So, why bother? Well, the more, the more work you do, the more you lose. And uh, the bigger the project is, the harder it is to, uh, to keep track and recreate. And the other way you do can only get you so far. So, the basics of any VCS system is that you have a, what you call a repository, which is uh, like a file database, it records, this is what records all your changes. When you do some work and you uh, want to save your changes, there's an operation called a commit, and you commit that changes, and the repository will save that. So let's get back to the work cycle. Now you do some work, you try it, and if it's good, you commit the changes to the repository. And if it's bad, you can simply revert from your last commit, and you can start, start from a clean slate. Uh, there are several SCM programs, maybe you've heard some of these. CVS is pretty popular, it was one of the first SVM, that's where I started, Bazaar and Mercurial. And Mercurial is actually pretty good. Uh, but as you see, as you go down in this line, it gets worse and worse. And Gib is somewhere up there. It's, uh, according to my experience and many other people, it's the opinion that it is the best to run. And what is Git? Well, Git was created by Linus Torvalds in the 2005 when they needed a, a better tool to manage the huge Linux kernel source space. So, this is what Git, uh, what Linus said. He said, I'm an egotistical bastard and I name all my project after myself, which Linux now Git. Linux is the, this, his name and Git, for those of you who doesn't know what it means, According to the Oxford English Dictionary, it's British slang for a non pleasant person. Now, now, Linus is a very intelligent person, unfortunately, he's also very arrogant and he knows it. <laughs> That's why he chose this name. But if you don't like this meaning, you can simply call it global information tracker. Now, to the basics of Git, you have, you have your repository. Uh, this is what the track of changes on Git is simply in a hidden repository, a hidden folder inside your project folder. Uh, and this is where all the magic happens. And then you have your working directory, and your working directory is a single, you can see this, 
says it's checked out. It's a single checkout of one version of your repository. This is all your, where all your commits are stored. You can check out any version of your working directory. And this is, uh, uh, I mean, the files are pulled from the, from the repository into your disk to be ready to be used and modified. Uh, then you can see here is this stage. Because you want to, when you're, when you're uh, done changing and you want to save your changes, you need to commit the changes to the repository. It's what's sitting here. The staging area is simply a place where you say what exactly, exactly what you want to commit. Usually on a graphical user interface, it's simply a checkbox if you say I want to commit this. So usually you don't need to be very aware of the staging area. But it gives you a lot of control. You can even commit specific lines of code not, or specific chunks of code, not uh, the, the whole file. Um, but not all files you want to, um, to, to track. There are, for example, on a typical Java project, and that means you have the build folder, for example, where you, the, the, the compiled code goes. But you don't need to track the compiled code, you want to track the source code. So any file that you don't want to track, any specific file called get ignore that you can specify and it, it gives you great control over what you need to track or not. So probably the most compelling feature of Git is branching. And on other CBS, uh, on other VCS, it's quite a, a very cumbersome task. Uh, it's very difficult to do. But on Git, it's very cheap process and it's, you are encouraged to do this very often. And this basically, it allows you to work in parallel lines of development. You can think of each branch that as a, 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 an isolated silo, uh, where by default, Git gives you the master branch. And you can then create branch off, you can create a new branch and start committing on that new branch without interfering with the other ones. So, for example, if you want to make an experiment, you don't need to copy that folder, you simply create a new branch and you start working, uh, simply commit as usual, and those commits won't be to the master, will be on the new uh, branch. And if you like your changes, you can simply merge back to, to the branch and to, for the, your primary branch to have those changes. And if you don't like the changes of, of, or the trend, if it doesn't work out, you can simply delete it and, uh, and it's done. So, now that begs the question of how you organize yourself, I want to present you a, success, a very successful software development branching model that you use when you are, we are developing uh, software. So, the first thing is that we have uh, two main branches, and the master branch in this case represents the production version. If you have a website, uh, and the website has that uh, top version, that's what that represents. And when you are developing, you don't want to mess with that, you these are these represent each of these commits. So you're developing here, you're creating new features, and when you're ready, you can simply merge back to master and you jump a new version. You can tag each commit. It's like a simple tag, you can give it any name you want, you could boost it like 1.1, 1.2 to represent a, a version. And that's useful because it's going, you can reference it later. You can uh, then check out only that. Uh, then we have the feature branches, so if you're developing on this branch, you want to, when you have a new feature, just create a new branch after developing on that one, if you have a, another feature, so to create a new branch, and when you're ready, you can merge back to the main development branch and then back to, to master. Then you have your hotfix branches, and this is, for example, if you're developing at, up to this point, and your client has this version and calls you in the middle of the night saying that you have a severe bug that you need to fix. What you do is you can simply check out the, the version that you have here, 1.2. It says I have 1.2, you check out this version, and then you create a new a new branch. You give it a descriptive name based on the bug that, uh, that it is. You work on the bug, but once it's fixed, you merge back to master and you jump a new version from 1.2 to 1.2.1 meaning there is an update that fixes the bug. And you also want to merge back to develop because you want to develop a branch to have the, the bug fixed. <laughs> want to, to, it, you don't want it to linger in there. Now, uh, the last big thing I want to talk about Git is collaboration. And this is, uh, it, it makes it very easy for you to collaborate with each other if you have a team. 
if you have a, 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 a personal project even if you want to share the code with others uh, there's awesome, tool, awesome tools in Git to, to do this and there are several workflows depending basically, basically on how you want to organize yourself or the size of your team I'm just going to present you one workflow that is very common for medium sized teams so you have several developers and uh, each of these has its own clone of the repository, its own version. Uh, each, each repository has the whole history of the, the, the whole changes that you've done along the project. And then you have a shared repository, and that's a very repository. It's only used to synchronize with each other. And you have an operation in Git, uh, or, or even a, a special feature in Git, which is called the remote, where you can have a branch connected to another branch in a remote repository. So when developer A starts working and he wants to share the code with his team, uh, he has done several commits on his branch and then he wants he simply does a git push and those changes are pushed to the shared repository. And then this developer wants to get those changes and simply does a, does a git pull and those changes are pulled in. So he has exactly what the other one has. And this is a two-way operation, as you can see. You do a, a push and pull, it's like upload and download. It's very simple. Uh, now, that's a question of how do you, where do you have that shared repository? Because obviously, they, they all have to have access to it. Uh, and usually, if you're working on your own computer, that either even has to be on a shared network or, more commonly, on a website or, or on a server, basically on the internet. And uh, there is a very popular website, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, it's called GitHub. And it's uh, pretty awesome, you can do many things with it. Uh, but instead of talking about it, maybe I'm going to, to show it to you. Is it github.com? .org? I, yeah.
And uh, along with GitHub, there is also a thing called GIST. It's gist.github.com. And basically, this is like Pistbin, if you don't know what it is. You can simply, if you want to share a simple snippet, not only of code, but of a text, of a, a, a writing document, or something that has text on it. You can create a new GIST, and this allows you to create a private one or a public one. The private one simply creates a name that is a random, a, an hash with 40 random characters. And uh, I have an example of one. You can see the, 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 the code here. This is for the last uh, Java class. And you can also comment on it. So if you have a, a quick snippet to share with someone instead of sending by email, you can put it on here. And the good thing about here is that it's every place that you make here is also a, a Git repository that you can check. You can do a clone on your disk and make changes, make branches, make experiments. And you'll have, you see here that you can see all the revisions and all the changes that have been done on this uh, specific phase. So, to, to get a git, you go to git-scm.com, you can download for Windows, Mac, or uh, uh, you can get the source and compile it directly on Linux or on the others. You have excellent documentation also. And uh, one thing to know is that git is a command line tool. And I, I like to use the command line tool and I, I want to, I like to, to know the commands because I manage several servers and I need to connect through SSH and I have a graphical user interface there. So, but you do have graphical user interfaces that you can use. I'm going to present on Mac, you have, for example, GitX. This is the same repository that you've seen on GitHub uh, from my classes. You can see several branches. This is the branch I'm currently working on now, which is the, the last uh, from the last class. And you can see all your changes here. If you have several people working on the repository, the, the, the author will change and the, you have the date. The, change, the, the changes are, are shown here below. Okay. The same thing that I showed you before was This one. And uh, to commit, you see, uh, as you can see, I have some modified files here. This one was already existing and uh, it was simply modified, so you can see exactly what you modified. These are new files that are even tracked right now. And with this problem, what you do is you can simply drag to the stage changes and then you give a descriptive message to that uh, commit. <laughs> this is what was done in the class, and you simply commit that change. And now it's saved here as a programming class, and you can see that it was committed. But there are others. If you, on Windows, you have uh, Tortoise Git. You can simply uh, uh, search it on Google. And Torplot Git is like, uh, looks like this. It's, it's a, a shell accessible, so you have to create a folder on your file. Go to there uh, in your explorer and right click, and you have uh, from the context menu, you will have Torplot Git, and uh, here are your commands. You, you have control over which commands you put here, it's the most commonly used that you use. But uh, you need also to know that uh, the graphical user interface is only an interface for the most used commands. Uh, it has a, about 159 commands, you can do a lot with it. Uh, and this is the, the most common use. The graphical user interface is in the complete replacement. So if you need greater control or something that you, can, you, that you want to do and your, for example, to try it doesn't allow, you simply add the, the bash to the command line and you can do uh, the command there. And this is how it looks, basically. The, this is a command, you may give a message. 
you can select the, the files you want to, to, stay, to, to stage and to commit and you commit that. You have also a thing called blame where you can see who made it, uh, what change in each line of code. Um, so far so good. <laughs> That's uh, uh, maybe a lot, isn't it? Um, the, the, the one I'm using right now is the Tower for Mac. It's a very powerful graphical user interface. You can see this, this is an example that I've done for Satin. And uh, you can see that I have several tasks created for whenever I need to send the files to Sata to the client, I packaged the, the files and sent to email. And after I did that, I simply tagged it. Uh, from, from these versions and I know exactly what they have in each version. So I can simply create a, a new branch from a tag as you can see. And then my working directory will represent what, what I had at that point in time if I had a bug and I need to fix it for example. These are several uh, um, branches. In the history file you can usually see how they are connected to each other. So you can see when I branched off from, from one branch and start working on another and at the same time I, passed, uh, I kept working on yet another branch. This is for example a template branch, it's a feature that I was creating. So when I was creating this feature I, I made another branch and when I was ready I simply went back to master. And master uh, it's, it represents the, the, basically the production version. So it's a great, um, every graphical user interface should have these, uh, this, this graphic to help you see how you're organizing yourself and where you're trying to try to are related to each other. Uh, when you do, when you are doing uh, merging, for example, if you have a Photoshop file, 
this is a binary file, it doesn't know how to merge those changes. And that's a really difference between using text files and binary files like the images or, uh, or, or, or these other like RPG files, I don't know if that's, that's uh, as source code in it. But uh, that's a really difference because Git would only know that if the, the, the different, the binary files, to, to, the two versions are different. It won't actually, can, it won't be able to tell which changes you've done. But it's, if it's a big file and you've done a, a change on it, the, yes, that will have to copy itself. Actually, no, once you create it and you change it, the file is already created. So, uh, from my experience in Git, it's really fast. You don't notice a uh, bump speed at all. Bazaar, for example, is uh, actually pretty so slow on, on the operations. Git is the fastest one that I know. Not only that, no, but there are actually studies that uh, can prove this. And is it safe? Does it ever corrupt the file if the computer crashes or something? I mean, is it, is it safe? Well, uh, if, if you have a. Uh, uh, you can only corrupt a file if the, if the computer crashes, if, if that file is being written, then it can be corrupted. But you can simply revert from your latest commit, and, you, and that is safe on the repository, so you can go back to that. And uh, conflicts, they do happen if, for example, two, persons, two people or two non-team members are working on the same chunk carry on your code, and they merge those changes, it sees that on the same space there are two different versions and it doesn't know what to do, so he needs a human to go in there and uh, say what version that he wants. So conflicts do happen and they are very easy to solve. It will give you a version called mine, which is your own version, and theirs, which is the, the, your teammates. And you can simply choose one or another or, or edit the file and merge what, what you want. So if you want to know, uh, there are lots of tutorials on, on Google. Uh, if you usually I don't remember everything, so I simply go to Google and I, I look up, look it up. Someone has already solved it. Any questions? Is the files that are the code profile? I the files that are supposed to be they are code profile. Uh, you mean the, the, the remote branches? That depends. The, it's the remote itself that can be public or private. And you choose one public or private. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it depends on the hosting that you use. If you if you own uh, a server, uh, if you have a website and you own a server, you can configure it that. And uh, no one will have access because you can configure who has access to it or even write or read access. GitHub is public, but there are others that I've used with my teammates on, uh, on, the, on the, the final project in uh, programming. And we, are, and we use the private repository that hosting CodeSat, CodeSat.net, I think. And uh, it gives you a private repository for free. And you can control, you can uh, invite other people to, 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 to your repository and see exactly who has write access to. Write access means push. The read access can just pull, write and read is it's both it's both. Any other questions? Any other questions? How many uh, are interested in trying this program out? Curiously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only a few? What? Okay. You can write to, to my email if you have further questions or if you want to help me set you up on Git, I can 